folks, welcome to the podcast, When I Became a Gator. I'm your host, V. Payulert. We're back with season two, where I connect with alumni, see where they are now, and how their time at UF shaped their lives, careers, and passions. This podcast will focus on the stories of various alumni around the country in hopes of bringing together the Gator Nation, one alumni at a time. Thank you for joining me on the podcast tonight. Uh, I wanted to just have you introduce yourself first. Sure, absolutely. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you and catch up. I know that we try to squeeze in some chats here and there uh, between our busy schedules. But um, well, my name is Min Le, and I grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida. I went to St. Petersburg High School for the IB program. Um, and in college, I was a little bit of a wayward child, so I switched up my majors many times, but um, I settled on a Bachelor of the Arts at the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences in sociology and a minor in business. Yes, super cool. I remember you did switch a few times, but it's okay. You found your... More, <laughs> <laughs> More than a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you found your you found your path, but um, kind of speaking about that, though, like, what were some of your challenges, like, with those decisions, like switching majors, like what were what was going through your head at the time, and kind of like what were your challenges um, in kind of finding your um, your career path, and um, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's uh, we can always sit down for for hours and talk about all the many reasons why I switched majors, but um, one of the things uh, that I realized early on was being first generation um, of my family of, of being able to attend a, a four-year university, it was both daunting and stressful. I, when I was a freshman, I remember I used to just like peer over and be like, oh, what, what's everyone else majoring in? I don't really have like a super specific uh, goal or focus at the time, um, but I did exploratory and just through the extracurricular and, um, oops, let me start over. So um, just through sort of like the uh, extracurricular participation, I know that you, you, we both know that we worked on uh, a cam together um, at some point. I think we were in the same year, right? Yeah, I think so. And for, yeah. um, for our listeners, AKM, AKM was <laughs> Asian Kaleidoscope Month. Yes, yes. And um, just through all of those experiences together and meeting the, the different types of creatives um, that, that came to perform, I think I started to develop that interest and passion for creativity and for production. And so um, at the end of, uh, after I graduated, uh, my roommates and I are longtime friends. You probably know them as well. Chris, Oliver, Bowden, and Sean, we went on a uh, sort of like a backpacking trip through Asia altogether. We hit Japan, Korea, and China. And I think that just widened my uh, perspective on what was really out there uh, besides our awesome small town college in Gainesville. And then from that point, actually a really interesting story when we were abroad um, in Japan, we couch surfed um, at a music producer's house and we made uh, a really good experience there and he actually recruited me um, after the trip to do PR marketing um, as a coordinator uh, for his music production company at the time they were putting on um, this uh, I think it was uh, some production back then um, but then that project kind of fell through and then at that point I knew I needed to take a bigger riskier step and really sort of find what I now know what I wanted to do, which was sort of digital marketing and branding. And so I booked a one-way ticket to California, <laughs> stayed with one of my bigs from uh, the freshman leadership program, Quinn Lee. And uh, for no joke, for one day I stayed there and my friend told me to uh, visit them in LA because it was one of their friend's birthday and they wanted me to you know, meet some friends and, and, and kind of say hi to, to me because I haven't seen them since they came to perform. And then one thing led to another, uh, I decided I was going to stay in LA. And um, at the time I met up with another fellow Gator, Shani, and Shani and uh, Benson allowed me to stay at their place and, and uh, crash on their couch and try to find a job in LA as like somebody that's just brand new to, to California. And then one thing led to another, 
and uh, some of my friends that I've met here introduced me to one of their clients and they, uh, they gave me a shot. They gave me an internship to uh, work and do marketing and social media for their uh, fashion label, just a small accessories label in LA. And then from there, they allowed me to kind of take the reins on the creative direction and the rebranding. So it was a very awesome but grueling experience. Um, but then from there, as things kept continuing to unfold, I found myself um, at a marketing agency and they trained me up to be a growth strategist. And then I landed my branding experience to them and slowly climbed the, the rankings there and then uh, became head of uh, branding for the agency. So it was pretty exciting. I, I would say that um, to others, maybe people should take a much less uh, stressful uh, course of action to get to their dreams. But I kind of felt that I, I needed to do everything. I needed to try all the, of these new interesting things and then landed where I am right now. And so now, oh, were you going to say something, V? No, I was going to ask you, like, um, I for folks who don't know you, you're a more extroverted person, um, and so am I. But for, <laughs> for 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 those who are kind of more introvert, what kind of tips or advice would you give to someone that who's more introvert, who like wouldn't really kind of speak out or like reach out to other people, or maybe a little bit shy to do so? You know, it's hard because I in 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 a certain sphere of uh, of, of friends and acquaintances, um, I. I'm able to get a lot more comfortable and I'm able to be that more sociable person. Um, but when I came out here, I was actually very, very sort of self-conscious because I came from um, I came from the East Coast. I didn't really know anyone here. And uh, most people here are already so interconnected into their little pods, their social pods of, of creators. You know, um, one of my closest friends here, she was a photographer. So she introduced me to two other photographer friends and through those friends I met more people but every time someone asked me like oh what do you do because that's like the question to ask in LA everyone wants to know what what you do so you can potentially work together collaborate whatever and I always said oh yeah I I just moved from Florida <laughs> and that's like basically that was that was all I was ever able to say until I got my first uh, full-time gigs uh in in marketing for for these uh for these companies but ultimately, I think taking pause and really understanding who you are as a person and how you want to present yourself, um, as cliche as that sounds, it really did help me in, in, in kind of like solidifying my focus of who I am, what I wanted to do and how I wanted to introduce myself. Those things uh, were really key for me to, to keep in mind as I socialized and opened up more with, with more people. But I was really lucky in each of my... Um, professional uh, milestones that I met really, really great people, people that kind of pulled me out of my new acquired shell of, of being out here and not knowing anyone. And now I have a lot of great lifelong friends out here too. So just be yourself, you know, like don't, don't try to be some something or someone just, just be yourself and, and you'll find the right people to surround yourself with. Yeah. Totally plus one on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, yeah, just interested in like how, since you are in the creative field, like what kind of inspiration do you use or do you use to kind of reset or find new inspiration um, for your work and your life? <laughs> inspiration for both work and life. <laughs> well, this is an easy one. Um, of course, my girlfriend, Chin, my life partner, my soon to be whatever you kids want to call it these days. <laughs> um, she really inspires me. And, and in all seriousness, she uh, inspires me the, the most to grow and to challenge myself in every way. And it's really great to have that. I think you and Harn have that too, where you guys just 100% have each other's backs. And each time one, one of you goes up one step, the other one feels like you should also attain that certain success or, or goal or whatever it is, right? However, whatever is the analogy of, of the other person. And I think that it really brings both creativity and happiness and positivity um, into my life and into my work. So just watching her and her element and how she's grown as creative um, as a business owner 
um, now that we have in between studios as co-founders, it's really exciting to see the type of uh, things that come out of her mind. And then when that happens, it inspires me. So that's that's the ultimate uh, inspiration you can find is having a life partner that will always support you, always root you on. And and uh, and our three pups, they be pretty happy too. <laughs> they yes. inspire me to be the best dog dad. <laughs> yes. Tell our listeners your dog's names. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, Hato, which means black bean. Uh, he's a giant Labrador. Um, we have Louie. He's a Spitz or a Chow mixer or, or whatever kind of mutt you, you can think of. He's like a little golden fur ball. And then Mila is our third. She's a German shepherd mix. And we adopted all three of them in Gainesville. <laughs> Woohoo! Shout out Gainesville Animal Shelter. Shout out to Gainesville <laughs> for, having the best, for having the best pets for adoption. Yes. If anyone is in need of an animal, totally adopt at your local shelter. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Also, I wanted to ask you, um, was there anything that really just like made your your time in Gainesville memorable and fun now that you look back? It's been like 10 plus years (laughs) since uh, like since we graduated. And for me, um, memories with you and our group of friends were some of the, you know, the highlights. So is there any, anything that you want to share that really stuck out to you in your time in Gainesville? Oh man, who could forget the tailgates? I think when I, when I attended my first, uh, Gator football game tailgate, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but it was an entire festival that was taking place. I think every corner of the city was, in school spirit and um, everyone was just rooting for the Gators. Um, but mostly uh, I, I, I miss the nights where we used to practice uh, dancing for, for uh, competitions and just, just uh, exhibitions with the, with the dance team at the stadium. That's like a very unique memory that, that I'll always remember and cherish. Um, and pretending to study at the rights all night, but really just hanging out with uh, tutoring zone notes in, in your hand, but you're just basically hanging out and talking and, you know, and then, uh, and then just some of those drunk nights with the, with the roommates and the, and the friends on the weekends. I think those are being in such a small college town, it, it kind of forces you to, to, to be tight knit with the friends that you have. And so we grew really close, just, you know, hanging out and, and, and trying to get through college together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that reminded me of speaking of dance, we've had um, Ellen as my first guest on the podcast and she was talking about FSA and like the big culture of just like dancing and just family. Yeah. But can you just a little talk about your um, Filipino student association um, dance memories? And I know there are some highlights for you, but yeah, could you just share um, for listeners who don't know, kind of like what the process was for the dance competitions, kind of those gru- <laughs> grueling nights, like practicing at the stadium. Yeah, just like give us a glimpse of what that kind of looked like. I just remember um, the recurring nightmares I have when uh, in my dreams I would mess up the choreo or come late or forget the the music. That's every every few years that that kind of dream comes up, but. It, uh, it reminded me of the time where we all uh, practiced hours and hours and hours and competed. And whether some of us were super good or, or, or just starting out, I think it was um, a sense of community that everyone felt. Um, and just the sheer experience and the adrenaline of being able to perform with your friends uh, for, for your other friends to see and for the, the student faculty to see, that was always fun. That again, to your, your other question, I think that was what broke my social anxiety a lot was just throwing myself into something and, uh, and really seeing where it takes me. Not, not worry so much about the goal or, or how good I am. And I sucked terribly. <laughs> I was pretty bad. Um, no, but just, yeah, you're, give, just you're the not experience. giving yourself enough <laughs> It's it's like if somebody was like showing off a move they invented in the seventies, like twenty years later. That's what I felt like. <laughs> what but, we should do is like go back and watch those videos. Like that should no, be no, no. 
I actually reported all of those videos on YouTube so that so that uh, so that they they get dissolved, uh, deleted from the internet. <laughs> I'm gonna go but, search uh, them but, tonight. <laughs> no, please don't. But that was that was one of the um, one of the highlights too of my my undergrad that came full circle when I moved out to California. Some of the dance teams that uh, you you hosted and and we hung out with um, actually were some of my friends that that met up with me when we moved to California all together. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun. It, it's, it's cool to see at one point in my life, I was like, ah, oh, should I have focused a little bit more? Should I have toned down the socializing? And then 10 years later, I'm like, oh, some of my peers and some of my uh, business partners are people that I've met from before. So that's always great. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's just like a balance and we've, I think in undergrad, you're really just trying to balance like a few things. You're balancing school, you're balancing like learning and growing about yourself and you're balancing like stepping out of your like comfort zone as well. So I think it all comes full circle, like you said. So yeah, I think sure. at this, I think at this point you're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. There's always yeah. more to be, to, uh, to experience and learn. You always got to stay a student um, at this yeah. point, you know? Exactly. Is there any final things that you would like to share to our listeners? Um, it was such a fun conversation with you and thank you for taking the time to speak to me. But yeah, any last things, last tips of advice that you would like to share with any current undergrad students or even alumni, um, you know, trying to find their passions or looking for a career change or just trying to find their way in life? <laughs> <laughs> uh have as many existential crises as you want have as many uh meltdowns and and failures as you would like to have only if you want to try many things and, and try to see what you're good at some some of us are lucky to understand exactly what we want to do and be very good with it and and at it for from start to finish and some of us like myself needed to kind of navigate a little bit and discover myself as a, as a person before figuring out that passion. So um, while you're young, everyone listening, uh, just give yourself some time to, to relax and to explore the world a little bit. I think that's mainly what got me out of my shell and, and to, uh, to really experience and, and pick up great projects and, and even trust in myself to, to carry out those projects to fruition, you know? Um, but uh, for, for other exciting things, for any of our uh, Gators, fellow Gators that are going to be visiting uh, the West Coast in Los Angeles in a few years, maybe give it like half a year or a year. Um, but uh, I wanted to share that in 2019, uh, Chin and I were very lucky to be able to, um, to participate in filming uh, an Oscars luncheon banquet for female nominees at Diane von Furstenberg's house. And, uh, and it was such an incredible experience. You can imagine two country bumpkins from Florida looking at ourselves like, wait, are we, are we in too deep? <laughs> Is this happening? Um, but uh, Chin was the main film producer at that time. And she shot the entire banquet. She was brushing shoulders with Ava DuVernay um, she interviewed Glenn Coase, Melissa McCarthy, the, the sound editors of First Man, who is Asian American, Eileen Lee. And if you guys are stopping in LA and the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures is open, you should stop by because her film's going to be there. Um, and it's going to be really great. And so that's awesome. <laughs> that's come, so see, cool. come see the come see the the footage and support support a fellow gator. <laughs> Yeah. And is there any other shout outs that you would uh, like to make um, anybody who made an impact at your time in UF, Gainesville, or even now? Oh, man, I, I have to give a big shout out to, of course, you and Philip and Quinley. You guys are, are always the ones that are there, busy in your own lives. But when we catch up, we, we give each other so much, uh, so much good energy and positivity. Um, I have to shout out to Shani and Benson for, <laughs> for taking me in like their, their third, fourth uh, stray dog and, and to allow me to experience what it was like to be to live in LA and to kind of get uh, my bearings going. So shout out to them and shout out to Chin being the best cook, creator, <laughs> designer, everything, <laughs> dog mom. Shout out, shout out to Chin. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. 
So I just wanted to thank you again, Min, for joining me and sharing your story with us on the podcast. And for those listening, if you're interested in hearing more, take a look at the show notes um, in this episode. We'll have all the uh, notes in the episode and you can find us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. But on behalf of the UF Asian Alumni Association, thank you for listening. When I became a Gator Podcast, I hope you enjoyed this episode and be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you find this episode. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Miss, for joining me. Thanks, Pete. Thank you.